Never in my entire life have I ever completed an original story to Five Nights at Freddy's in any of the Five Nights at Freddy's gaming series. Ever since when I started from Ultimate Custom Might or even Freddy Fazbear's PCB Simulator or any of the games that I specifically have, that I only have, I've never completed them. Until in the 29th of January this year. Here he is! The music fuck is the You touch me, I swear to God. I did it! I freaking beat it! I beat it! I beat the troll engine! And unfortunately, the cutscene is absolutely invisible. Oh, whatever. Who the heck cares? I beat it! I did it! I. I defeated him! I defeated him! I freaking did it! Burn trap is dead. Well, at least we know that we think he's dead anyways. But defeating Burn Trap in Security Breach was my number one priority ever since when I got the game. It was only the true ending that I really wanted to get. Of course, I need to get some other endings as well. This means this is my first Five Nights at Freddy's game that I ever completed. The first FNAF game. Of the of its original story. Forget about the alternative endings. This is the first game of the original story that I ever completed, ever in my life. It was an absolute experience. I mean, ever since when I did that stream on the 29th, this 8th of January this year, I was absolutely happy. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a cutscene, and also I got glitch jump scared. But that didn't matter to me because guess what? I did it anyways. Now that I'm finally finished playing the original story, I felt like it was finally time for me to actually talk about what DLCs should be in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Another Mad Theory episode. Yes, I know! Now, before we actually get into that, so yes, as I said, I completed the original story, which is the true ending to Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. And also, um, while I also was at it uh, in my past stream last week, I actually managed to get the uh, the leave ending, uh, and also the uh, dismantle Vanny ending. And I also managed to, and, and aside from the true ending, I also even managed to get the leave ending, which is the car escape ending, if you know that one. So that's four endings that I got in total now. So this, so I just need to get the fire ending, which I try to attempt, but however, um, something happened. I thought it was supposed to work, but the big door couldn't, the big red door that's right in front of me, it didn't give me the option to leave out there. I don't know why. And then of course I have to do the princess quest ending where I have to do the three princess quest arcade games. Now, um, I'm just hoping that um, they don't glitch um, and crash the game while I'm playing those Princess Quest games. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Deal, if you're li listening to this, then uh, I hope you're listening. They said that they were already working on some patch notes, which is a good thing. But aside from that, they better, um, they better work on like a whole bunch. If they are, going to be putting some patch notes in there. Yes, that. Now, before we begin with the theory DLCs that I came up with, Thank you so much to all the support who's actually managed to help uh, support my channel so far. It has finally reached out to 100 subscribers. 100! Now, of course, number one, it's obviously not really not that much. I know I've got, like, still way more to go. And obviously, just to tell you, this is still going to be a hobby of mine. This channel will always just be a hobby for me to do. I'll probably just only just freaking upload, like, mostly weekly. But I do want to try a few things um, th that I wanted to start out um, when that ever comes and when I stop uploading just to test this out because um, there's a few things that I actually do want to try out. Just one thing in particular, mostly, but hopefully it goes out all just fine. That is, if you want something, a, a series to be, you know, uploading daily rather than uh, aside from just doing it weekly so yeah uh, aside from that also 
I decided to make up a bit of a challenge for once we actually hit 100 subscribers. Just for this little thing that I just wanted to do. Let's see how high we can actually get up. Aside from just staying at 100. Can we reach up to 200 subs this year? Maybe perhaps uh, try getting 200 subs if for this channel at halfway of this year. Let's try that. I feel like that's a pretty good way of doing it. And if that works, we'll try to be, I'll, I'll say whatever, how much more subscribers we can actually get to uh, for the rest of this year. So let's see if that actually works. Yeah, of course 200 is also not gonna be enough, but I really want to try and keep on the challenges up ahead. Mm. Though, as we keep on getting higher and higher, I, I really don't want anything like too freaking over exciting, okay? Like, this, this thing, this whole YouTube channel of mine will always be a hobby and it will stay as a hobby, not a job. Remember the last time last year when I told you about my temporary job? Guess what? I'm coming back to doing that temporary job again because it still hasn't been really technically decided, but I'm coming back to it for this year. I'm not going to tell you what exactly it is, but I'm just telling you right now that it still needs to be decided whether it's going this temporary job of mine is still going to is finally going to be official job, hopefully. And even furthermore up to date, uh, I also want to talk about, well, I even actually made a Reddit page on a uh, Reddit page finally. It's called Galaxy Riders Z Ritual. So yeah, you can actually go to my Reddit page. Uh, it's uh, on the uh, screen of my channel now. It's finally there. I call it Gravity Burst Riders actually, but however, um, the name was too full, so I had to um, minimize it back down to Gravity, Bu Gravity Riders Z Ritual, unfortunately. But you, as you can see, this is my thing right here on the screen right now. This is my Reddit, so you can at least post some uh, some uh, some memes. Some uh, good videos, uh, highlights, um, I also like anime, obviously, I like anime, <laughs> at least one of the things that you do know me about the anime was Yu-Gi-Oh, which I might also be playing on, uh, playing the PS4, because I did get Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel for free on the PS4, I decided to get on there, because, uh, I wanted to see the experience, how, what a Yu-Gi-Oh game would feel like on a PS4, and also, by the, and make sure you, of course, you gotta follow these rules that I have in my Reddit. Just make sure that you don't do anything stupid or anything appropriate. Whatever the rules I, I written down there. So, anyways, yeah, go ahead and check that out and into my screen now and give me some, you know, become a member of the, of my Reddit and also give me some karma, uh, whatever the heck that's supposed to mean. Cause uh, it turns out if I want to interrupt interact with others in reddit i need some karma i don't know how much karma i need but please let me know in the comments and also help me out with that as well <laughs> now that that self promo is out of the way now let's go ahead and talk about the dlcs okay guys so the first dlc that you should probably obviously guess is probably much one of the one of everyone's favorites that they probably think that Steel will probably bring out is probably a Bonnie DLC. That's right, Glamrock Bonnie. Everyone's been asking for a Glamrock Bonnie for quite some time now, ever since we know that Glamrock Bonnie is not in the game. Well, as Glamrock said, Freddy says, not anymore. So, everyone has been suggesting to have like a prequel, like how Docker suggested, like do a prequel um, of, uh, of a different child who was in the Pizzaplex, but this time, instead of having Freddy to help you, it will be Glamrock Bonnie helping you, and then we'll get to see the events of what happens and the uh, and the starting plans of Van Vanny and Burntrap, yeah. along with the very sad news of Glamrock Bonnie and how he was actually got destroyed. Whether it was Monty who destroyed uh, Glamrock Bonnie, or was it Vanny who actually hacked into Monty? to order him to destroy Glamrock Bonnie, if that makes any sense. And to be honest, yeah, I really do kind of feel like that probably does make a lot of sense. V Vanny hacking into Monty to order him to destroy Glamrock Bonnie, that makes absolute perfect sense. Also, some people also say that they she probably took out the armor of Glamrock Bonnie and actually made and um, use that to uh, rebuild Burn Trap's armor, which makes sense that obviously that William Afton as Burn Trap is obviously still inside a freaking spring locked rabbit suit. And speaking of that, could you actually imagine the, what he would actually look like if his armor was no longer wrecked and also was actually kind of completed? That would be kind of weird, but kind of cool at the exact same time. Glamrock Trap. A bit weird, huh? 
And as a little bonus for this DLC, I really also think that we should probably get a bowling mini game as well, like actual bowling. Playing bowling in Bonnie's bowling alley would probably make a lot of sense since that they were going to actually put in an actual bowling mini game in this in this game, but unfortunately they didn't have the chance and they kind of scrapped it. So I feel like they should probably put that back in. Just basically for the fun of it and see how well it goes. Also, I'm not quite sure whether or not this DLC should be also an Easter DLC. Now, that's never used, that's probably not possible, but maybe that's a little bit too obvious since that, well, you know, Bonnie is a bunny. So, I mean, I mean, that was just basically, I said, this is just a suggestion if Steel Wool is listening to this, but who knows? Uh, it's your decision. I'm not going to stop you. One of the many mysteries about the Balloon Boy mi World minigame in Security Breach is that there is this one specific looking glitch that actually comes in when you actually try to, you know, follow these specific little lines when you try to follow as best as you can into the map. And obviously when you see and when you get to the ending of it, then there's actually like the sun but looks absolutely weird and different to anything. It kind of feels like that sun and moon have somehow like combined together as one even though they already are the same in animatronic. Because basically, sun is always working in the light, and moon obviously works in the dark. But the colors and the way its art, its artwork looks in in this specific mini game when you get to this ending of the mini game. Oh man, it's it looks so weird, and yet then it hit me. It actually kind of feels like you know, uh, take for like light and rock from Pokemon Sun and Moon, for example, or Ultra Sun and or Ultra Moon, if you get the idea. Because you know how light and rock always seems to have like you know a day form or a night form, depending on which game you pick. This is that kind of thing. However, when it comes to a dusk form, the dusk light and rock is a little bit different. So, sun drop, moon drop. And maybe there could this this look this animatronic here could be a dusk drop because obviously it looks like that it's that the that the sun more looks like to be like a sundown or a dusk sun because you know that's what happens when the sun sets. This is the kind of sky and weather you will probably see whenever the sun is always in dusk mode. So there might be a possibility that we might be coming back to the daycare. And this dusk animatronic, dusk drip, might, I mean dusk drop, <laughs> might actually allow us to actually come back into the daycare and we might actually find do something else to complete this certain mission. Okay, now this interesting DLC that I came up with is actually a pretty good banger in my own opinion. Anyways, if you have seen any of the arcade machines, which you have seen a pretty fair amount of them, you should be able to see one specifically called Fredbear's Nom Nom Bits. What you see there is actually a Fredbear, which is actually from the, which is the exact same Fredbear from Five Nights at Freddy's 4, the minigame where the child uh, gets bitten in 1983. This is the exact same pixelated Fredbear that we see in that certain minigame. And in this case, instead of eating the child, he's obviously, you know, eating burgers. Which is interesting. I don't know whether that's supposed to be a reference that, you know, like, basically the bite of 83 and all that kind of stuff. Which, but I feel like that could actually possibly be work. And maybe, just maybe, we actually might even get some teaser references to a Fredbear and Friends family diner uh, perspective or um, some sort of lore specifically in the game. We might even see the crying child, the Bite of 83 victim again in some certain cases if we complete a certain uh, goal in this minigame. Not to also mention that there is also another Fredbear minigame, Hangry Fredbear. Which in this case, it's actually not Fredbear, but Nightmare Fredbear from FNAF 4 as well. So I'm kind of get the feeling that there's got to be some kind of relationship between these two arcade games. And if it's possible, we're going to have to play them both. Because it kind of feels like 
this is like the original Fredbear, correct? This one right here, and then you have to play up against um Night Nightmare Fredbear. Trying to like reference back to FNAF 4 and also Fredbear and Friend Family Diner. I feel like that Steel Wool might have the chance to actually make those two mini games or arcade machines possibly playable. So we can actually try to unlock some secrets that we might have actually missed in FNAF 4. Why don't we have a Roxy Raceway DLC, which basically speaking, we are literally kart racing in Roxanne's racetrack. Oh yeah, you heard me right. Racing in Roxy's Raceway, like literally racing in carts. Literally Five Nights at Freddy's cart. And to be honest, I really do feel like that should actually be a thing. And if it's possible, make it multiplayer or and m online multiplayer. Game will probably have to be first person because you know, when playing as Gregory or Glamrock Freddy, you are you are obviously playing in first person view. So it wouldn't surprise me that Steel Wool will probably have to put the racers, uh, whoever you're playing as, in first first person view. I don't see them trying to do like a third person view, though however that would be cool, at least it'll be a bit more fun to see them like racing behind or try to look uh, at the front view of the of the character while you're racing. The other question is, uh, will they be able to add like, you know, items like how they do it in Mario Kart, Crash Team Racing, Sonic Racing, or any other kind of car game that involves with items? Also, I think that they should even perhaps like put like playable characters, um, as I just said, with characters. Uh, which characters should there be exactly? Well, obviously, I recommend that Gregory should be in as a playable character. So with Glamrock Freddy, and even of course Roxy because she this is her racetrack. Then I think like you should also put in Glamrock Chica, Glamrock Monty as playable characters, Vanessa or Vanny, whether they're the same person or not, which I will get to that later, or even perhaps Burn Trap in this game. I don't know about Music Man because DJ, well, Mini Music Man you could, but DJ Music Man, he's way too big to race in the game. And also the way how this should also be stylized, I don't think maybe even doing a FNAF World cut racing game styled like thing should even work i'm not that quite sure if i'm asking too much here but if that's possible yeah sure but i don't think that's possible at the same time but all i'm saying steable if you are still listening to this and if you watched this video so far and if anyone else has also watched this video so far please make a freaking racing game racing mini game in roxy's raceway please I don't know about this one. This one's a little bit interesting as well, but I was thinking about, you know, how he ha we have uh, DJ Music Man dancing and playing his music. I was thinking on the lines that maybe try to have like some sort of rhythm mini game for DJ Music Man. Just, you know, just for the fun of it. Like, but it could be like a, a Guitar Hero styled game where you have to like push buttons or maybe a bit like uh, the style of Friday Night Funkin'. Try to take inspiration of that. That could also probably work as well. Just basically pushing buttons while trying to also listen to great music and trying to follow the rhythm while you're playing uh, the music as DJ Music Man. Which I feel like that should be okay because I feel like, you know, there isn't much of DJ Music Man, to be honest. We only just see him while he actually tries to chase us. Uh, but trying to play as DJ Music Man uh, for a mini game would be pretty awesome, and I feel like that's a pretty good idea, if I'm being honest. Now, I've got the, all of those out of the way. Now it's time... Now, I'm not that quite sure if this is going to happen, but I do notice some of the Joy of Creation references in the arcade area and in the D DJ Music Man level. Uh, where they call it Bear in the House and Bear in the House 2. Where you get to see Ignited Freddy and Ignited Bonnie from the Joy of Creation. Whether that's the Joy of Creation story mode or the, or the Joy of Creation Reborn. It really doesn't matter. But it's actually amazing to actually see that Steel World has actually made a reference to the Joy of Creation fan game by Nixon's Gaming. I'm not that quite sure if they're going to do it. But if they are going to actually 
if they're going to make those arcade games playable, where the first one you have to go up against Ignited Freddy, and then the second one you have to go against Ignited Freddy and Ignited Bonnie, then heck yeah, I would love that so much. Because I never played the Joy of Creation. I haven't played any of the Joy of Creation series at all. But it will be a great experience for me and for other players who haven't played the Joy Creation games. And they could play it in these arcade games in this arcade room, as you can see here. Uh, I feel like that will be absolutely fantastic because the, they looked at, they are a pretty good reference, if not an awesome reference, to uh, link back to the Joy Creation so long ago, which I feel like that's a great idea. I, I just can't even stop talking about that. It's so good if they actually put a DLC for that one. So yeah, that'll be great if you make a Joy of Creation uh, minigame DLC with those arcade machines. How about this crazy idea for you for a DLC? How about another Halloween DLC? If you remember the Halloween DLC for Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted, The Curse of Dreadbear, that was all based on Halloween stuff, but it also brought up some interesting, well, you know, connections back to some of the past games of Five Nights at Freddy's. And you know what? If we are going to be, if Steel Wool is going to be planning to do a Halloween DLC, I was thinking more in the lines of making the, the Glamrock animatronics or any of the Halloween any of the animatronics in Security Breach uh, looks some sort of got some kind of style of Halloween sort of stuff. You get the idea? Like first off, starting off with the glam rock animatronics, for example, they could probably look like uh, that kind of punk rock style, like Kiss, for example. You know how they got like the white face paint and whatever, or mask perhaps, and they just and the rest of them is like gray, you know, green and black. And also the whole pizza plex could be also be like black and green, or perhaps, you know, decorated with a bit of orange pumpkins and with it or something like that. I don't know any other ideas for the other animatronics perhaps. Maybe you guys have got some ideas. Tell me in the comments below when it when it comes to ha doing Halloween um DLCs. Uh and also with the Christmas DLC I'm not too quite sure. I don't feel like that a Christmas DLC should be worth it. I, I mean, the last time where they did a Christmas update was basically they just added some a few Christmas trees, a few Christmas, no, a few Christmas presents, and that was basically it. The animatronics didn't look, you know, they didn't look any different. They just only decided to add in like you know the deck, the Christmas decorations to it, which is fine by me. I mean, it wasn't really that interesting. I thought it was going to be new levels or something like that, but I guess they they didn't decide to do any new levels, perhaps, or put new skins on the animatronics. If they do do this, do that kind of stuff for Security Breach, then I'll be darned. I'll, I'll be really happy if they try that. Put some new levels, new missions, perhaps. Just do it, make it fun instead of just having to make it so freaking terrifying. It's like, you know, it's a Christmas DLC. Okay, now that I've actually managed to get all of those out of the way, there is only one last DLC that I was thinking about that Steel Will should really pay attention to. If you have also managed to get into this video so far, that, that, that that's great. Because, get ready, because you really want to hear this one. Now, as you can tell, that after when you complete the true ending of the game, we know that will that Burn Trap is taken by Molten Freddy, or Chimera Freddy. I feel like you should call him Chimera Freddy, because he looks so gigantic. He's the, he's the absolute amalgamation of every single animatronic from the past. And after, when we notice that Chimera Freddy, Chimera Time Freddy is, you know, is taking Burn Trap up with him and he gets his revenge unless he decided to take him up for something else. Because obviously we don't technically know if Burn Trap is now dead or he's still alive. Like, Chimera Time Freddy could just basically... He could have just basically took him with him to basically escape out of that underground pizza place. Which I feel like that could have been that could have been why he decided to take him because maybe he noticed that he was trying to escape. Maybe not in maybe Chimera Time Freddy wasn't in his possession, but maybe he wanted him for something else. And this is where the best part comes in. I have a feeling 
that Willy, that Burnt Trap and Chimera Time Freddy will fuse together, creating the ultimate animatronic amalgamation ever in Security Breach. Now, first off, there's a few choices. Either it could be Burn Trap, who could actually take over that could fuse that can fuse with Molten Freddy and take over the rest of his body, but fuse with every single part, all of him, but make Burn Trap himself stronger just by literally hacking into well, obviously Chimera Time Freddy. Because obviously, remember the hand that was actually sticking out of the end. Of the of the last trick of the first trailer of the game that we actually never got to see because everything was you know we got this instead of this which I feel like this part where Burn Trap was going to get his hand out that could still be used and I think that could still be part of a DLC where basically Burn Trap has still um is still alive and also he is fused with Chimera Time Freddy. And he's in control of the big blob himself. Bigger, he's nastier, and he's pretty much going to be like old purple, just like that arm right over there. Like, it would have to use all of his hacking powers to take over this, this absolute monstrosity, just so that he can escape, and then he will come back in the pizza plex to take revenge. Or, it could be the other way around. Bolton Freddy could actually take over... Uh, burn trap instead, and maybe he's the one who's in control. He absorbs burn trap, and then maybe he uses him as the main source to become the most powerful animatronic yet. So technically speaking, this can go both ways. What do you think? Should should burn trap be the ultimate animatronic to be fused with and take over burn uh, or take over Chimera Time Freddy, or should Chimera Time Freddy fuse with? Burn Trap, so that he can become the ultimate animatronic as the final boss of a DLC. But, however, I almost forgot about this. Before you can fight, depending on whether you're going to fight both of them fused, but one of them is going to take over. What about Vanny? We still don't technically know the actual confirmed analysis whether Vanessa is Vanny or Vanny is completely someone else. However, in my opinion, I still believe that Vanessa is Vanny. Now, if you take a quick look at every single um, ending cutscene from the alternative endings that we've seen by far, we know that one of them in the Savior ending, where we have to complete the three Princess Quest games, we actually have to we have to, uh, we actually saved uh, Va Vanny. In this case, I feel like it's actually Vanessa. With the fire ending, however, people got so freaking confused about what was happening after the end credits that we see Vanessa on the building looking down at the body. And everyone thought it was someone else, right? However, take it this way. I think that when Vanny slash Vanessa died, after the fall from that ending, I think this is Vanessa's spirit. You get where I'm coming from? So after when she fell from that hard fall from from getting knocked over by F Glamrock Freddy, uh, she becomes a spirit. And she's looking down at her body, her, her physical dead body, uh, regretting it. Like, she feels guilty. She feels like regret coming from her she's now a spirit and she cannot escape the pizza she can she, her soul cannot be free because the pizza plex has completely burned down and she's now stuck forever she's now like a, she's now a lost soul she's no longer free that's why i think that's i think that's where people got a bit confused but anyways aside from that if we want to get the real confirmed um, theory that whether it's completely factual that Vanessa is Vanny, that I feel like we should have one final battle against Vanny in this map here. 
So if you have a good take a look at this map, this map was used in the teaser trailer of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. You have seen this map before, and I'll show it to you guys again, just in case. As you can see that I feel like this map could be used for something specific. And that, I believe, is for the level to the level 12 security security door that we we can actually go through. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you've seen one of my live streams, you would see that there is a door that says level 12 security that you need to get by getting the security badges. Now, I feel like you could also get that as well by collecting some of the security badges in the Pizzaplex. And once you reach level 12, you're supposed to get something, but nothing's there. I feel like that's what you need to do. Get to level 12 to get inside this room so you could face Vanny for one final time to defeat, so you can defeat her. And then the the actual canon reveal of Vanessa, of Vanny is Vanessa, and it can finally be confirmed. And then finally, after when that happens, that is when you can actually face off the ultimate boss in the game, whether that'll be Burn Trap all algamated fused with Molten Freddy, but Burn Trap is in control, or it could basically be vice versa, where Camera Time Freddy is basically taking over uh Burn Trap. And there's and of course, whether either way it will go, you will have to defeat obviously both of them because they are now fused together. But those are my th but yeah. Those are all the DLC ideas that I that I decided to come up with that Steel Wolf should probably pay attention to this video. And also, if you guys have also paid attention to this video, thank you very much for listening very f uh, for um, coming this far. And that is the end of my math theory for this episode of Security Breach for DLCs. I don't think there'll be any more DLCs that I should probably come up with because there's like literally plenty to go around and i'm probably going to stop right there so thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you like it please like and subscribe after when you finish watching this video and as always my name is mad dog and and may your days be mad and rad <laughs>